In this video, I'm going to talk fairly briefly about the client-server model and the peer-to-peer -peer model. And you will have heard certainly of peer-to-peer, -peer, I'm sure. You may have heard of client-server as well. And the way it works is this. I've got a computer. Here it is. Okay, there's my computer. And what I want to do is I want to load a web page. So what I do is I send a, a request to my... Uh, I send a request requesting this web page to be displayed. So I send that via my internet service provider. Okay, that might be BT, it might be Virgin, TalkTalk, Talk, Orange, whoever. So that request goes via my ISP. It then goes to the ISP of whoever is hosting the website. So in my case, I'm trying to access a school website. My school website, I'm using Virgin at home. That's my ISP. Other ISPs are available. And my school happens to use EasyNet as their ISP. Okay, and then they send the request down to the school where there's a server. Lots of flashy lights on a server. There we go, and so the request goes to there. The server then processes that request. It says, oh, somebody wants to, to review a web page. And what they do is they then send the HTML, the web page, back via EasyNet, via Virgin, and down to my computer, which is the client. Okay, so the client makes a request and the server serves it. Okay, that's its job, is to serve the data. Now, with a simple web page, that's nice and simple. More often, though, most websites now um, use something like PHP or ASP. There are different ways of creating web pages. There's a static web page. You can go to a, a notepad or Dreamweaver or, or whatever, and you can create a static web page that just exists. There it is. There's a file with some HTML in, and that is, that's your web page. You can view that whenever you want, and it's just there. Okay. More commonly, things like you know shops and VLEs and, and all these kind of websites will use something like PHP or ASP, and there are various other um, technologies out there. I don't know why I made that lowercase. Um, PHP, ASP, there's all kinds of different technologies that will make a dynamic web page. So that it's not that there's a HTML file saved ready to go. What happens is you make a request, you go to Amazon and you search for um, Star Wars DVDs. And what happens is the PHP will generate, will go through a database, get some results, and it will generate a web page for you when you request it. So there isn't, there isn't a HTML file saved there waiting to go already with all the Star Wars films on. You have to do a search and the PHP will generate the HTML, and then that gets sent. And what that means really is that the server has to do a bit more work. It doesn't just have to find the file and send it to you. It has to process the request, generate the file, and then send it to you. Um, which means the server is doing all the work. The client asks for stuff and the server has to go and do all the work and bring the thing to the client, which is generally the way you want it to be. If you go to a restaurant, you know, you order a meal, you don't want to be sent into the kitchen to cook it yourself, that's kind of not the point. You're the client, the server, the waiter, the kitchen staff, whoever, are going to do all the work and are going to bring the, the food to you once it's ready. Okay, that's exactly the relationship we want. Now the other relationship is peer-to-peer, -peer. and if you've heard of peer-to-peer, -peer, it's probably in regard to piracy, because a lot of people worry about peer-to-peer -peer in terms of piracy, because things like BitTorrent, uh, LimeWire, things like that use peer-to-peer. -peer. And the idea is, I've got a computer, and I've got perfectly legitimately, it's not always piracy, you know, BitTorrent is not illegal, um, and nor should it be, I've got a file on my computer that I want to share with the world, okay? Um, so this is me, and this is the other guy or girl. Okay, it's obviously not me, it's my computer. Okay, and again, I'm with Virgin. They're with Talk Talk or whoever. And I've got a file on my computer. I've, you know, I've made a video, I'm going to share it. So I put it out on BitTorrent or whatever, I put a tracker out. Somebody downloads the tracker, and what they do is they go, right, well, I want to download that, so I'll send a request to Talk Talk, he'll send it to Virgin, he'll send it to me. I will then send that file back can draw an error, honest, by a talk talk to them so they can download it. That means they're being the client, I'm being the server. But at the same time, they also have a file that they've made on their computer. And I want to download that, so I'll send my request by Virgin and talk talk to them, and they'll send the file back to me. We are equal, okay? Client server, one computer does the requesting, one computer does all the work and the serving. Peer to peer is equal, that's what peer means. You know, your peers are people who are equal to you. 
And so peer-to-peer, -peer, we are equal, and we can share them between us. And lots of things use peer-to-peer. -peer. Um, I'm pretty sure, I wouldn't swear to it, but I'm pretty sure Steam uses peer-to-peer -peer when you're downloading games from Steam. Um, I'm absolutely certain that the iPlayer, when you download a, a TV program from the iPlayer, and you can store it online for up to a month, that kind of thing, that's peer-to-peer. -peer. So while you're downloading it from somebody else, somebody, a third person can be downloading it from you as you go. So you know, as your progress bar goes from 0 to 10%, once you get to that point, you know, not necessarily just that point, but once you get to that point, somebody else can be downloading the first 8% from you because you've already got it, and so they can copy it from you. And what that means is that the BBC servers aren't getting quite as much of a hammering um, because once they sent it to me, I can then share it with somebody else. Probably not as quickly, um, which is why you can have lots of P2P -P connections going at the same time. Um, but this idea of rather than client server, where the client does the requesting, the server has to do all the work and serve it, and they've got all the bandwidth. You know, if you imagine if you've got BBC iPlayer, if you've got a million people, which is not beyond the realms of possibility at all, all trying to download a, a TV program at the same time, then the BBC's bandwidth is going to be really, really badly damaged, really, really affected, damaged, really heavily overused. There won't be the capacity. But between all these peers, if we can share bits of the file ourselves, so this person gets the first 10%, this person gets the next 20%, this person gets the next 10%, and so on. I know it's not 100%, but you get the idea. Then we can share bits of this between ourselves as well. And it, it works quite dynamically, it's quite clever at filling in the gaps. Because remember, these, uh, it doesn't matter what order we get the bits in, really. If you're downloading a whole file, streaming it does. If you're downloading a whole file, it doesn't. You can get it whatever order you want. And so we can get this bit here, this person can get this bit here, this person can get this bit here. Once we've got those from the BBC, we can share them between ourselves because we are peers and it takes some of the bandwidth load from the BBC and makes life a bit easier. And that really is the difference between client-server and peer-to-peer -peer network relationships.